Paper was like gold in medieval times. I want tobacco. Sugar. That everything we thought we knew about the world might turn out to be completely wrong. TV property queen Sarah Beanie is taking on the biggest challenge of her life. Trying to save run-down stately home Rise Hall from wreck and ruin by turning it into a top-flight wedding venue, all in just eight months. The sheer scale of this project could easily swallow us whole. Dry rot, wet rot, woodworm, mould, sadly, we've got the lot. 149 windows, 97 rooms. It's terrifyingly huge. Sarah Graham and the family are up at Rise Hall for Christmas. It's huge fun for the kids, but it's no holiday for mum and dad. This was going to be their big chance to kickstart the project. But Father Christmas has delivered a rather unwanted present, a big blanket of snow. This is not the happy new year they wanted. We can't get on with the roof. And because the roof still leaks, we can't get on with the decorating in certain areas. Uh, some of the decorators haven't been able to turn up. We are waiting on a paint order that didn't get through. We're going to have to be running to the finish line. <laughs> Anyone who's managed to make it to work is given a mop to get rid of the melting snow. Oh, it's not the first water it's had on it anyway. With the water off the floor, there's a chance to get some work done. Sarah has to crack the whip and get those who have managed to make it through the snow working. Everyone's pulling together in a desperate attempt to get the project finished on time. I don't think there's so many things that need doing. Where do we start? It's a huge job. There are 97 rooms over two floors. The front of the house where Sarah and the family live is structurally sound but needs some serious refurbishment. In particular, the three main reception rooms will have to impress as they'll be the centerpiece of the hall. So we just fit these two wires and we need to fit a pendant in the middle there. The rear of the house has been a complete disaster zone for years and it's taken two months hard graft to save it from total dereliction. Unless they move fast, it could go the way of Trentham Hall in Staffordshire, which was abandoned and eventually completely demolished. Rise needs to start paying for itself if it's to survive, which means transforming the 1970s sports hall stuck on the end of the house into an elegant reception venue. But the snow means it's too wet to work on and the radiators they need to dry the place out can't get onto site. Ooh, it's cold in here. On top of all that, their first real deadline is approaching. Sarah's found a couple mad enough to consider getting married in June, only six months away. And they're coming to inspect the hall for the first time in just a few weeks. What'll happen is that come, you know, February, March, well, you know, if it goes on into February, I mean, we're really in trouble and I think we'll just have to, we're just going to have to put the end date back. And, you know, everyone will say, no, it's not because of the snow, is it? It's because you're crap. As they head back to London, it looks very unlikely that they'll hit their summer wedding deadline. As January ends and the snow gradually melts, work finally resumes at Rise. Much needed supplies finally arrive and the lads can get stuck into the leaking roofs. And this week we're making good headway on this gymnasium roof, so that'll please them no end. By the middle of February and only four months late, Sarah finds a new, rather more reliable radiator supplier. They're quickly plumbed in and the whole heating system, even the ancient fireplaces, get a much needed overhaul. This is the sort of thing that will, will block a fireplace. If you're running a gas fire in a, like a Victorian house and you don't have a cowl on the top and you have a bird building this thing, it's a potential killer. Despite all the good work, the bad weather has put the whole project a month behind. There's only one thing for it. 
an emergency trip to Rise by Sarah, Graham and the kids to see if there's any way they can get the restoration back on track. Turn the lights off, guys. Oh. What? Poo? No. No, there's no option of poo. Sarah's decision to manage the whole project from her London home is putting a lot of stress on the family. They're swapping holidays for round trips to Rise, and with about 100 wee stops between London and Yorkshire, it's a very long journey. Are we closer to Rise or London? Kind of London, honey. But why don't you go to sleep, and when you wake up, we'll be there. I remember saying, there's no way that we're going to get somewhere that's more than a couple of hours from somewhere else we want to be. I was like, I don't know what happened, actually. I quite sure at what point I lost, lost my senses and we ended up taking on this stupid house. We should have just left it to fall down, didn't we? It's past midnight and everyone is exhausted, but Sarah and Graham have to sneak a peek at the main hall. The decorators have been busy, but will Labini be happy? <laughs> do you like it? Do you like it? What do you think? Do you think it looks pretty, Charlie? Graham's an artist, so he's very picky about the colour choices. That's so lovely. Looks like it's bedtime at last. Too tired to worry about it too much tonight. Looks good, though, I think. <laughs> One room down, only another 96 to go. And they're going to have to work fast because in just six weeks' time, their first potential customers are coming to look round. Will the happy couple be able to see past the chaos? Sarah, Shit, I think there's a car here. Bollocks. Will Sarah get Rise ready in time for their wedding? Ten years ago, Sarah Beanie and her husband Graham bought this tumble-down stately home for a song, but it needed floor-to-ceiling restoration. Really, a project like this, it's completely ridiculous to be trying to achieve what we're trying to achieve for the amount we are, in the timescale we are, from the distance we are. But simply restoring the hall won't save it. It's got to start paying for itself. So Sarah has a grand plan to turn Rise into one of East Yorkshire's premier wedding venues. The only problem is she has no idea what this actually entails, or indeed how competitive the multi-million pound marriage market is. OK. But Rise is also Sarah's family home, and it's half term. So if she and Graham want to get any work done, they're first going to have to keep the kids happy. And there's nothing a gang of little boys like more than mud and boats. <laughs> oh no! Driven it onto the bank. Daddy, go get. You're going to have to swim. <laughs> well done, Charlie. <laughs> It took ten men, four diggers and one pregnant Sarah to build Graham's dream fish pond. Bet he's wishing they hadn't dug it quite so deep now. Yeah, that's just what I wanted to be doing in February this, Charlie. What a hero. <laughs> OK, please don't yeah. do that again. Go. Not on the island, honey, not on the island. <laughs> 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 no, 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 no. No? Don't do that, don't do that. Darling, darling, please don't go in. That's what daddies were made for, is to go no, in to the pond. <laughs> How cold! Don't, don't, don't go right under, cos I'm not sure... With the kids happy, it's time to trudge back to Rise, dry off and try to get the project back on track. We used to come up here at half terms and holidays and have, to be honest, a brilliant time. But now we're coming up and, and it's absolutely imperative that we use that time to achieve an enormous amount because that's our only full time lump of time that we have to get this project finished. But the bad winter has put them at least a month behind schedule. 
Work's only just started on turning the back of the house into luxury bedrooms. The gym somehow needs to become a sumptuous reception room and she needs to fix up the front of the house fast. That part of Rise Hall has been saved from the ravages of damp and dry rot, but even so, its three main reception rooms need to be as impressive as they would have been in their heyday. As these early photographs show, Rise Hall was once packed full of enormously expensive furniture, as the Victorians were obsessed with filling their house to the rafters with a jumble sale of knick-knacks they'd hoovered up from around the Empire. So they've come up with a solution that comes in five litre cans and will hopefully give them that champagne look on a beer-like budget. Graham is an artist and to him, colour is everything. To us, colour is a really, really cheap way of making this house look fantastic. But there's one big problem. The commercial paint manufacturers just don't make the colours that would have been used when Rise was built. So there's nothing for it. Sarah and Graham are going to have to use up more precious time and make their own paints. We're mixing our own colours because we can't find the colours that we want elsewhere, and partly because it's really um, exciting to find some of the colours that would have originally been used on the house and so that there's an integrity to it. And the fact is, is that Graham's, well, he's an artist, he's obsessed with colour. But I know he can create the perfect colours, because that's what he does all day. Graham reckons all paint should match, no matter what goes where, and that he can create an entire set of colours that will all match, and by doing so he believes that their paint will be a striking and central feature which will reduce the need for expensive furniture. Actually, I am a crashing bore about paint anyway. But if you make a mistake in a room like this, you know, we're not talking about, it's not, I can't do it on a Saturday afternoon. It'll be thousands to, to decorate this room. You, you can't afford to make that mistake. So you do, you have to get it right. You have to kind of take it a bit more seriously than you would, because I've spent a few days literally watching paint dry. You know, it's not great. Designing the entire colour scheme for the 97 rooms of Rise Hall from scratch is a daunting undertaking. But if Graham gets it right, it could save them time and money. Get it wrong, and he could put them even further behind. I'm just trying to get a good colour, but a good block of colour, because what we want to do is try and match the colour so that we've got a really good oak colour. So, we'll see. Am I going to do it with oil paint? There you are. You've got an insight into my life. This is what I do during the day. Mix up paint. Uh, this is, this is, do you know what? I'm not allowed in Graham's studio. He won't let me in there. So, um, he goes into his studio and he locks the door. And if I, if I go see him on his studio, I have to knock on the door and he comes out like this. And then locks the door again. So I never go in. So I've never seen him mix up paint. Apart from until we did this. What colour does it look like, Billy? What did you say to me before? That colour. Yeah, what does it look like? Um, poo colour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. I think that looks true. Right, well, that's what we were aiming for. We were trying to find poo. So we've done it's brilliant. <laughs> what a genius thing. Put some orange in. That's quite good. This, this is actually just a paint effect here. So this is a base coat. And the paint effect. This is all dragging that would have been done with a combing like this. What's funny is that years ago, every decorator would have been able to do that sort of thing. Graham's trying to recreate many of the hall's original colours based on scrapings he's taken from the walls. But he's also got to create completely new colours for the front rooms, all the bedrooms, the corridors, and ceilings. He's mixing 45 individual colours in all, and that's not a quick job. But Sarah and Graham can't have their two and a half grand a week decorating teams twiddling their thumbs waiting for design decisions to be made. In a perfect world, you'd be always three weeks ahead of everyone on that site. You'd have all materials and all plans done for three weeks in advance, and there have been times with the paint matching, particularly where we've been kind of 48 hours ahead of the decorators, and we're kind of like, oh, God. 
The first big decorating push is on the main stairwell. This is where bride and groom will have their wedding snaps taken, so it's got to look really special. They've plumped for a bold red, which they're going to accentuate with stenciling and gilt plaster work. But have they really got time to fuss over a spot of gold paint way up on a 40-foot high ceiling? We're on a little bit of an indulgence, aren't we? Fortunately, I haven't done any of the bank accounts recently, and if I looked at the accounts, we'd probably stop painting bits of ceiling. But I until... Um, it'll be half finished. <laughs> The secret of this look is not to be too pernickety. There's nothing to it really. It's it's what any time save painter and decorator can do. It looks fancy, but really it's not. It looks good from down there when you're up close. It's okay. Um, the stencil work. Any housewife can do with stencil work. The gold paint, the steady hand, the right brush. But you know, it's no problem. Picking out sculptural details in plaster work was all the rage in Regency times, like here at Beaver Castle in Lincolnshire. The more ornate and complex the paintwork, the higher status the household. And this status decorating extended into the choice of fabrics and furniture. And at Brodsworth Hall in Yorkshire, you can see the full effect. It's what Graham and Sarah would like to reproduce at Rise. In lots of Edwardian and Victorian houses in this country, there's lots of detail that you probably haven't even noticed you've got because it's all painted the same colour and you're not really making the most of it. But if you've carefully chosen the paint colours and a bit of time spent picking it out, maybe not quite so boldly as gold, and that looks sensational. That one that you did, which is the one that you did? That looks rubbish. <laughs> After six weeks of backbreaking work, the redecoration of the hall is finished. Despite the endless winter delays, they've got one of their key rooms finished. Perhaps they might have that summer wedding after all. I think everything's really good. Actually, do you know, for the first time, I feel as if we're actually going in the right direction now. Bit, you know, the scaffolding's come down, and the staircase looks better than I thought it would. It's magnificent enough for a house like this, and it may not be everyone's cup of tea, but it's ours. We're happy, <laughs> so that's the main thing. In fact, all around, it's been a good trip. Mm, it has been a really good trip. Next one will be really shit. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Sarah may be an expert with paint and plasterboard, but when it comes to weddings, she's only ever organised one, her own. So she and Graham are on a fact-finding mission to Somerset to meet the owners of Maunsell House, Sir Benjamin and Kirsty Slade. They've spent over a million pounds refurbishing their 13th century ancestral home, and now it hosts around 50 weddings a year. They've got 13 individually designed bedrooms, a ballroom, and can cater for up to 200 guests. And just like Sarah and Graham, Sir Ben and Kirsty restored the whole thing themselves. We call it a library. It's got no books, because oh, the slave family are not big into so reading. Lovely. But it's their real chill-out room, so they that can just relax. Wonderful. Big squishy sofas. Knowing absolutely nothing about the wedding business, Sarah needs to glean as much information as she can. And Kirsty, the mistress of all things marriage, has kindly agreed to let them in on a few tricks of the trade. And her husband, Sir Benjamin, has some tips of his own in the honeymoon department. Wow, what an amazing bed. Huh. We always put the little welcome letter on the bed for the guests, which is so they see it straight away, which is, is nice. So that's a nice welcome for them. That's a lovely touch. <gasps> Blimey, this is... This isn't a bed, this is a room. It's six foot six long by eight foot six wide, so it's... Eight, eight foot big. six? Yeah. This is the size bed I need for us to fit all the children in it. Probably not the point on a wedding night, is it? It's wasted on a bride and groom, really, isn't <laughs> it? It is wasted. wasted. I think we can make it personal without it feeling completely invasive. You could leave a signed book on the bed. 
I could leave people assigned. I could leave people signed photos of me everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> lucky, lucky punters. It's just what they just what they need on their wedding night. What's the rope over there? We have a rope here because basically some of the people who get married with us are obviously old-fashioned and probably inexperienced and virgins. So we have um, we sometimes put if they require uh, books on. <gasps> advice no. on what to do. I told um, you to take those out. And we have to... <laughs> they need these aids. It's the first night. And sometimes there are other aids that we do put in the drawer. They may get into trouble. And so if they do, they have to ring this bell here and a help comes and then we can untie them from the bed or whatever. So uh, and... The dog barks when he hears the bell, and everybody comes and they sort of sort so, things out. So that's so it's not to just announce that the deed's been done. <laughs> well, maybe it hasn't been done. There's a problem, but we have to help if, if required. That is. <laughs> Let's face it, Rise's sports hall doesn't look anything like this. So I've done a couple of tables to to give people different options and different ideas. And there's more to a successful wedding venue than paint and ponds. Behind you is really the Bible, what we work from, which is the running order, all the timings. We've got table plans here. Frankie, um, it's obviously a lot of work it is planning a lot of work, the wedding, which yes. is slightly concerning me. So are you planning to meet the brides and grooms and do some meetings yourselves, or are you going to have somebody do that for you? We're a little bit winging it at the moment. The solution is you're going to have to get a really good wedding planner yeah. who's strong and young, who can move tables yeah. and be there and has energy and doesn't mind sort of going to bed at 2 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. It really has brought home to me the huge challenge is to fill the gap between the fact we've got a venue and there's caterers. We need someone to tie it all together. And that's going to be key, because we're just too far away and we've got too much on, really. Mm. Back at Rise, Karen, the head decorator, has returned from a week away, and she's not happy. Graham's meticulous attention to detail over the paint colours has been stalling progress. He just needs to pick the colours for the woodwork and the colour for the down stairs ceiling and the stairs underneath and he's had a whole week and he's not managed to do it and now we're, we're held up. At the moment the uh, one of the biggest problems is Graham can't decide what colours he wants <laughs> so we have to put half of a light grey and the other half a dark grey and then Graham and Sarah will come up and now we want a different colours on it so it is a bit frustrating yeah. Graham's a painter but he paints pictures not houses <laughs> there's a difference every man to his own. Let's not do all this time-consuming, fancy work. On the, you know, these are, these are things that I feel they could come back to. There's nothing for it. Poor old Graham's got to make another 200-mile trip to Rise to confirm the right paint colours and head off a potential mutiny. I'm in for a roasting. Are you sure? You, you don't seem as stressed or as yeah. cross with me as I thought you might be. Are you going to try winding me up so I am? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Sarah told me to behave. I sort of understand it's frustrating for her, but that's the nature of doing up a 50-bedroom house when you're living in London and you're trying to get it done here, so it's going to be a bit difficult. The decision to project manage the restoration themselves from their London base may be coming home to roost. Whilst we've got brilliant contractors who are running different bits of the project, there isn't a project manager on site for lots of reasons. One of them is that, you know, to be honest, that's kind of what we do. <laughs> We're doing it from 200 miles away, which is ridiculous, really, and completely and totally um, traumatic in terms of, of making it actually work. Things like this, when it's nice when Sarah comes up with me as well, so that we can sit down and have a talk about it, and really, when she's in London and I'm here, it's all about me making decisions on my own, which I never like doing, because they're normally wrong. I'll tell you what, if you could make decisions as quick as you can bang babies out, <laughs> we'd have the house finished. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> and we've had our little mood swings, but we usually laugh it off in the end. We get there. It's all positive 
um, moaning and groaning. It's not personal. So, you know, it's all about the job. And as long as they're satisfied with the job, you know, they've, they've often swore at me. <laughs> With the Graham and Karen contretemps over, it's time to get back to it. And at last, all the hard work seems to be paying off. But Graham still has colours to find. The back bedrooms need finishing, the miles of corridors are still as dark as pit shafts, and the old gym has all the charm of an old gym. Sarah and Graham are in a classic Catch-22. They have to get the work done quickly. But if they rush, they might compromise quality and anything that isn't perfect could put off picky potential customers. The future of Rise all depends on the next six weeks. Sarah Beanie is trying to save part of Britain's heritage by turning her 97-room Georgian money pit into a top-class wedding venue, but both time and money are tight. I haven't got 10 million, I haven't got 5 million, I haven't even got a million to spend on this. In fact, we've probably got less than half of that. Spring has finally arrived, and Sarah and her family have headed north for two weeks of on-site work. But first, there's just time for the annual Easter egg hunt. Having everybody up for Easter is fantastic, and it's what this house is all about, filling it with laughter and life and people. And I always love our Easter egg hunt we have up here because it's mad and there's hundreds of children and lots of chocolate. Do you know, the trouble is it just makes me want to have more children, which is not good, is it? <laughs> but sadly, it's a very short break this year. We, we need to get on as soon as... As soon as Easter day is over, we'll just get back to it this year. Oh, Charlie, darling, how lovely. So after all the eggs have been found, it's back to work. Because in just 24 hours, their first potential customers are coming to look around. But will they be able to see past the wires and unpainted rooms and pick Rise as the venue for their June wedding? We've put the word out to see if we can find someone who, who would be prepared to get married at short notice and commit to, to this building site. And I think we have found someone who might be prepared to do it. Sarah knows that Rise is far from the finished article, but ever the canny businesswoman, she has a sweetener she hopes will swing the deal. I mean, they're not going to be paying us anything. Um, they're going to, to pay for their catering and their flowers and their side of things, but we're going to give them the house and not charge them for it because it is quite a leap of faith. We're untried and untested as a wedding venue. And as the sooner we start weddings happening here, the sooner we can get on with the other endless phases of repair that need to happen. Just because Sarah's giving them the house for free doesn't mean she can cut corners. Bad word of mouth would be disastrous for their fledgling wedding business. So Graham and Sarah need to get the front reception rooms of the house furnished and looking fantastic. For inspiration, they're heading a few miles down the road to the magnificent Brodsworth Hall. Brodsworth is considered one of the finest examples of high Victorian design in the country. Its sumptuous interiors have remained pretty much unchanged for the last 150 years. Sarah and Graham are particularly interested in the main hall and the elaborate paint effects that they'd like to borrow for the reception rooms back at Rise. You've got a number of different things all around this hallway that are simulating different um, types of stone, really, and a lot of this you can see is painted marbling, and actually going through, you can see they kind of have a terrific kind of cumulative effect of the, uh, the painted marbling and the scagliola columns, and then the statues are actually real marble on grey, white marble on grey marble basis, so it's, it's a terrific decorative effect so, all the way through. You know, the, the difference, I mean, you've got, what, however many, what, six greens there, you've got two or three reds there, I mean, you've got all the colours of the rainbow, and yet it does come together. Yeah, it does. Look, it's wonderful. 
Was it because they were cheapskates or was it because they wanted it to look like a paint effect? I think they wanted it to look like a paint effect. I think this was a whole style of decoration that wasn't thought of as cheapskate. I think it was fashionable and it was rich and it was, mm. it was an expression of wealth. You can't really tell even when you get close. There is every real single... talent, isn't it? We wanted to come here to really decide on exactly which paint effect we wanted on the columns and fortunately uh, they have all paint effects here. I think Sarah thinks it's all a bit Disney. I, I just, I just think honest, it's perfect. I, I find it just a tiny bit crude. That's what I love about it because it's actually, it is a bit ludicrous I suppose. Fired up by their visit to Brodsworth, Graham has called in specialist decorator Charles Hesp. Together they're going to transform the main hall and the staircase from 21st century bland into a riot of Regency colour. I'm as excited as a child about this. <laughs> yeah, isn't that pathetic? Charles has worked his marbling magic on some of Britain's biggest buildings, including St Paul's Cathedral. So how does he go about tackling a project like Rise? We make it up as we go along. As Charles transforms the hall with nothing more than a feather, and Graham pushes the rest of the site forward, Sarah's off in search of her own bit of glamour. She's gone to Croydon to get herself a chandelier. Oh my goodness, look! This is uh, one of the cherubs off of your chandelier, in all honesty. Wow. Don't touch, it's hot. It'll be filed on a bench and cleaned up. Can I make one? Yeah, you can. We'll, we'll get Ray to set you up a little, uh, yeah. a little mould. How hot does this get, then? Uh, it's about 470 degrees C. So that's quite hot. It's quite hot, so be careful. That's it. My dad would be so jealous. <laughs> Go on, just knock it. There you go. Now put it... <laughs> there you go. Look at that. <laughs> That's now put beautiful. it down, because it'll get quite warm. Well done. There's something fantastically enjoyable about it. I think I really, really need a forge at the end of the garden. <laughs> <laughs> Is this ours? Yes, so that's yours. Oh. That's that very gorgeous. heavy. gorgeous. This is our drawing. Can I get a copy of the drawing? Yeah, I'll get you a print of that and you Great. can keep that. And that's where this design sort of emanated from over the years. And this is... Uh, in our catalogue of 1923, again, you can see that's basically the same design. So how much is this chandelier this in 1923? One, uh, 98 pounds. 98 pounds so, is a bargain. Bargain, eh? <laughs> it may have cost less than a ton back then, but today this lighting spectacle is going to cost Sarah three and a half thousand. It's great. Thank good, you. good. Glad it's you're pleased. Mine. Back at Rise, there's a hive of activity. Beds and carpets are delivered. Up go the dusty portraits of owners past. Sarah's focal feature takes pride of place. <laughs> Charles puts the finishing touches to his marble effect masterpiece, all in an effort to impress the bride and groom tomorrow. It's nice to have it feeling like home again. But will it be enough to win them their first wedding? It's 9 a.m. and the wedding couple are on their way. Right. Right, kids, you all want a toast? If Sarah can't convince bride and groom Selena and Ben to marry at Rise, all her future plans will go out of her non-existent windows. We've got some people coming to look at the house who might want to get married here. I, you know, I think it looks... Um... I think it looks great. Let's hope that the people today do as well. Um, mm, I was tired last night. What, what do you want on your toast, boys? What is it, honey? Um, oh, here, let's not have that. What do you want, then? What are you having, babe? So you want the yogurt. You, no, try and be nice. Get spread. <laughs> Sarah, Shit, I think there's a car here. here. Bollocks. Are they out the front? Yeah, I think so. Here, boys. Who wants to eat this toast? I've got to go and talk to Sarah. Sarah, you go and you go and see them. I'll do the breakfast. May I get that? 
Yes, you can. It has your face. But nobody wants to look at look round the house with you and your disgusting. Okay, come on, let's go. They're here. Will you shut the dishwasher? Sorry. Right. That's going to make all the difference, isn't it? The dishwasher shut. They're not actually going to see the fact that we have a derelict sports hall. We're expecting them to get married in. The dishwasher will what? sort it. They're going to see that we don't have. Oh, or twenty-three or, um... indoor staff. Come yeah, on, it's fine. Who's going to get married in the? Come on, honey. Will Ben and Selena be able to see past the chaos and kids and plump for rise for their big day? So we've got quite a lot of children. <laughs> <laughs> I am Sarah. Selena. Selena. You're Ben. Hi. Hi. Hello. Nice to meet you. Sorry about our, our coaches' voices of children. Graham. This is Graham, my husband. Selena. Hi. Hi, Selena. Hi, 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 Ben. Nice to meet you. Thanks very much for coming. Yeah. I do know it is a bit of a. Yes, yeah, well, I believe. I would call Building it. Building site, yeah. <laughs> Eight months ago, Rise was riddled with rot and damp and on the brink of collapse. It was the last place on earth anyone would want to get married. But Sarah and Graham's efforts to save Rise from extinction and keep it as one of the area's most impressive stately homes are beginning to pay off. The reception rooms are now wedding ready. But it's a different story at the back of the house. A gym full of scaffold, pokey corridors and half-finished bedrooms. Sarah's going to have to use every ounce of charm to cover up for Rise's shortcomings. Yeah, yeah. Just shut the door. So, um, the heat. Um, so, yeah, so there's this room. And there'll be maybe a few other bits in here, but this is sort of pretty much how it is. A lot of brides have an enormous expectation of what they are hoping for. Just getting into everything now. <laughs> Great. It's got a new carpet to come on, but it's sort of nearly there. It gets increasingly bad with the back. I love the staircase. That looks yeah, lovely. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. It makes me much more concerned about what, whether we're going to be able to deliver exactly what they want, because there's a very kind of high expectation of this kind of fairy tale day. This will have pictures in it. The pictures are still being painted. Yeah, and this is a nice light beam, isn't it, in contrast to that one? Mm. How many guests are you? Thinking? About a um, hundred, we think. What they really want is their own special day with their own special house, and that's what we're kind of offering. Well, there's no denying that Rise is certainly special. I'm just wondering if I should get a bottle of milk. <laughs> oh god, now it's supposed to be here. And if you take the dog away, then you get bonus points. Yeah. <laughs> so, wow. Yeah. <laughs> it, it does look quite bad, but I assure you it's, it's worse. It's just an absolute look. Did you want a dinner dance thing? Um, sort of? No, we would. I was thinking like English tea vintage type of theme. Um, so, like that type of. So, seated not too. Yes, yeah, yeah. probably seated areas, yeah. Mm. The ceiling is being tented, so right. it'll look like a sort of a lining of marquee, okay. just the ceiling. Oh, right, yeah. And then the lighting is all Maybe. being done. Obviously, the scaffolding is coming yeah. down. <laughs> and oh, the floor God. will be like a parquet floor. Yeah. In fact, you can just oh, see it under God. here. It's yeah. being refurbished. It's actually a wooden floor. You get the feeling that Ben and Selena aren't that convinced by Sarah's sales patter. A bit like this, but not like this. Yeah, it will change. Like a lot of work in eight weeks. Yeah. So. Sarah doesn't sound that convinced herself. I mean, it is a bit of a leap of faith to imagine it. Mm. But, um, in fact, it's a bit of a leap of faith for me to imagine it. I'm not sure that we need to do anything to the sports hall, really. OK, I'm quite sure that we do. <laughs> kind of thinking people could dance around the scaffolding. Yeah. Here, let me have that one. Let me have that one. <laughs> so Sarah and Graham have given Ben and Selina the grand tour and the big sell. But was it enough to persuade them to tie the knot at Rise Hall? I think looking at the back bit, we were a bit worried, weren't we, thinking there's only so many weeks till completion. I want to have a lot of contact with, um, obviously, Sarah and the development team just to make sure that it wasn't going to still have scaffolding on, on the actual day. And the actual day is the 19th of June. Sarah's got everything crossed that Ben and Selena say yes. And people might ask, why have you put a date on it? But the sooner we have a wedding, the sooner we can get it ready to have more weddings, the sooner we generate an income, and the sooner this place is restored. With costs soaring and time running out, the restoration of Rise absolutely depends on having this first summer wedding. But Sarah and Graham can do nothing but wait. Their fate is in the hands of Selena and Ben. 
Sarah Beanie is trying to restore her crumbling country pile and pay for its upkeep by turning it into a wedding venue. A couple of days after showing her first potential bride and groom around a half finish Rise Hall, Sarah gets the call. Well, the great news is that Ben and Selena have agreed to take the house, but we have got an awful lot of work to do, and the last thing I need them to do is pull out. That really would be really bad at this stage. Um, so we've got to get a shift on. The wedding date is set in stone. It's just eight weeks away, and there's still a lot to fix and finish. Ben and Selena understandably want to keep an eye on progress as their big day approaches. Next on Sarah's to-do list is the entrance to Rise Hall, if you can call a mud track an entrance. Now we're just driving up towards Rise Hall now, and with any house, the approach is incredibly important. And these are the gates, which are fabulous. Sadly, we don't own them therefore we can't use them. So now how you approach the house is a different route. So um, the entrance that we use is a little bit further up here. And grand it is. Yeah, this is it. So what we're effectively using at the moment is an old farm track. So somehow what we have to achieve is the same impression that those gates give, but you can't just build a copy of them because a copy of them would be entirely inappropriate within this big setting. So um, that's a bit of a challenge. <laughs> Everyone stand well back over there by the saws, those good boys. Again, you stay there till the trees come down. Before they can sort out the drive itself, there's need for a bit of impromptu tree surgery. So Sarah's roped in her brother Dickon to help. He and his junior lumberjacks are clearing the way to what will hopefully be Rise Hall's new wedding-winning entrance. Kids, chainsaws, what could possibly go wrong? There you go, boys. You can go, grab your saws and you can chop off the branches up the length of it. Daddy, this branch snaps itself off. Huh. You mean this is a very long, hard one? No, but I got it out. The boys, both big and small, are in their element. But they'd better watch out, cos here comes Mum. <laughs> you want to be like Uncle Dick Dick when you get older? Maybe. What are you going to be when you grow up, Nini? Builder. What are you going to be, Billy? Singer. Ooh. I'm going to be... I'm going to be a tree chopper down. <laughs> That's called a lumberjack. Trees down, entrance cleared, the brickies move in. And in no time at all, Rise has its very own set of breeze block pillars. They may need a bit of work before the wedding day. Getting wed is a serious business. And for Rise to be a fully-fledged wedding venue, they need a license from the local registrars. They're responsible for the legal and civil side of getting married. So today, Sarah, Graham and other wedding venue owners are attending a very important meeting where their official responsibilities are being laid out. So to go on to um, the next item on the agenda, which was the licensing process. Yes, the wedding license. The singularly most important document you need if you want to hold a wedding on your premises. But we have had a couple the document you'd imagine a stickler for detail like Sarah would have sorted out a long time ago. I've got a tiny weeny crisis at the moment because I sort of didn't get around to organising the wedding licence. And consequently, if you haven't and the couple cannot be married... I just assumed you, you filled in a form, sent them a cheque, they came and looked at it and said yes or no, and that was the end of that. No, it's not that simple. If we receive objections uh, via the advert or from the fire service, these are investigated by someone we call the proper officer for registration matters, rather a wordy title. So anyway, it's now sort of more complicated. And if I'm honest, I spent all week thinking I must do that flipping application for a wedding 
um, and I haven't done it. To be safe, we do need that three month window at least in order to be able to process your application in time. More than that, if you can possibly give us that. Sarah and Graham have sacrificed a lot to restore Rise Hall, and all their hard work is finally paying off. But one tiny administrative oversight could bring all their plans crashing down. If Sarah and Graham don't get the wedding license, both their and the bride and groom's dreams will be in tatters. Next time, Graham gets locked out. <laughs> oh, come on, man. Sarah needs a little restoration work herself. Did I put any makeup on this morning? Do I look really old? And the race is on to get Rise ready for its big day. I'm really nervous about tomorrow.